Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to our videos for continents of the world. My name is Jason and we're up to number five on the videos and we're going to be uh, doing a lot of work on the mountains today. So uh, let's look at the map so far. We've done uh, quite a bit. You can see I've colored in a little more of the coastline and uh, that's looking good. I thought I would actually work on that a little bit with you now too. Um, I'm kind of working my way around Greenland. I actually label that big island of Greenland. Now, as you color in Greenland, you might have some, some lettering over here, Baffin Bay and Labrador Sea. So try to avoid coloring over your letters. Okay, you can see how I'm, when I get, when I get near the letters, I just kind of skirt around them like that. Same thing over here, and uh, when I did the South China Sea, I colored the coastline, but I, I did not color over the words. Okay, so that's, that's important that you try not to do that, because it, it'll obscure your, your labels, and you don't, you went to all the trouble of labeling things, you don't want to cover it up. A nice light touch with the blue, too. You don't have to go too dark. You've got lots of little bays and inlets and coves. When you come to these little islands, just do your best to go around the islands. It's almost impossible not to color them a little bit, but that's okay. Just try to go around the bigger islands. There's a couple I can probably get around those. Okay, so I'm gonna work my way along the northern coast of Greenland, up in the Arctic Ocean. It helps to go over your coloring a couple of times. If you, go, if you give it a couple of coats, you'll catch all the spots you missed the first time. See how much better it looks when you give it a, a second pass with a pencil. Okay, I'm not going any darker, I'm just going over it a little bit to catch the spots I missed. When you have two um, land areas close to each other too, it'll the blue will kind of blend in between the two like that. So you can see I went all the way around Greenland. Okay, uh, little by little we can continue to do our coastline. <clears throat> but today I, I thought we would work on the mountains mostly. So let's look at our list of mountain ranges. We have uh, the Rocky Mountains, which are already drawn in on your map. Um, the Appalachians, the Andes, the Atlas Mountains, the Alps, the Himalayas the Ural Mountains, the Great Dividing Range, and the Trans-Antarctic Range. Okay, so let's, uh, let's look at the uh, Rocky Mountains first. Okay, now I've chosen a few colors for mountains. I think green and brown work well, different shades of green and brown. You can throw in a little orange or red if you'd like, but um, you can see this is the symbol that we used show the mountains. It's a little little triangle shape and uh, you can see how I can draw it like that. And what I like to do is I, I like to take the time to try to color each one of those little mountains separately. It takes a little bit longer. You could just color it like this, but I think it looks neater if you color each one separately. And I just kind of jump around with it with one collar and then I'll, I'll use a different collar. Before you know it, your mountain range is nice and colorful. Okay, so I'm going to do a 
darker green. Many times these mountains are co covered with trees, so they do get, you know, mountain ranges uh, colorful at certain times of the year. So it's nice to throw in a little orange. Uh, makes your map look nice too. Okay, so you can work on those. Now uh, let's let's take a regular pencil and let's locate these additional mountain ranges. Let's we've got the Rockies on there. Let's do the Appalachians now. The Appalachians run from kind of the southeastern United States, right about here, and they work their way up, way up into Canada. So you can. It's not a big area, you can just kind of put them in on a bit of an angle like this. Okay, that's good. Um, and once again, you can add a little color. We'll, we'll work on that uh, coloring on our own time. You can work on that on your own time. I won't color them all right now. I'll locate the, the other ranges. I'll go now to the Andes Mountains. And the Andes Mountains are located in South America. So we're going to go down to this continent. It's pretty easy to locate them. They're, they're located right along the western coastline. So I'm just going to move one at a time, just carefully draw them in. You don't need to put too many, you know, sometimes um, you can go too overboard putting them too close. You can see I'm spacing them out a little bit. That's good right there. That's a good representation of the mountains. Okay, the next ones are called the Atlas Mountains. And those are located in the continent of Africa, way up on the northern coast. There we go. That was easy. Those are the Atlas Mountains. I guess we could check them off as we go. I'll check off Appalachian, Andes, Atlas. Um, the next one is the Alps, which are located in Europe. And I've got, um, I'll put it, there's the country of Italy right there. It's got that very unique shape. Looks like a big boot. Okay, the Alps can run right above. Not as big a mountain range as like the Andes or the Rockies. Okay, good. So I'm gonna check off the Alps. Okay, the next would be the Himalayas. And uh, those are located north of India, right along the, um, kind of along the Chinese India, right around in this area. I believe Mount Everest is located in the Himalayas, which is the tallest mountain in the world. Okay, so there's, there's a nice group of mountain symbols. That's, those are the Himalayas. Why don't we actually, I should be labeling them. Let's do that before we forget. I think I'll use all capital letters for the mountains. Okay, you can see my letters kind of follow the curve of the mountain range. Okay, down here we can label the atlas.
You can abbreviate mountains. So Atlas Mountains. So the Himalayas, I think they just call it the Himalayas. They don't say Himalaya Mountains. It's just the Himalayas. Okay, same with the Alps. Just write Alps, sufficient. Okay. Um, over here in, uh, now it's gonna be a little tricky to, uh, why don't we write it off to the side? This is, this is kind of a nice method sometimes when it's hard to label something. You can kind of write it off on this open space on the side where we've got plenty of room. So uh, A-N-D, Andes Mountains. Okay, and then I'll put a little line pointing to those mountains. Okay. Um, the Rocky Mountains, I, I can probably fit it right here where there's a nice open space. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to write this one. Appalachians, it's quite busy in here. I just, oh, maybe I can fit it right across like that. A, P, double P, A, L, A, C, H, I, A, N, Appalachian, and I'll just put M, T, S, a little line to them. Okay, so the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, I think uh, we've labeled all of the ones we've done. Now we're going to jump down to the uh, next one in the list is the Ural Mountains. And the Ural Mountains are very uh, useful because they are kind of a they are kind of a natural di uh, dividing line between Europe and Asia. So they kind of, if you sketched in the Caspian, they're pretty easy to locate. They just run kind of in a north east direction from the Caspian. Okay, and uh, you can write Ural. Mountains. These, these are a good division between the uh, continent of Europe and Asia, which is one big land mass. It's a big land area, and this is the dividing, kind of a, div a good dividing line. Okay, so we'll call those in eventually. Um, next one is called the Great Dividing Range, and that one is located down on the um, in Australia, okay, that one runs right along the kind of along the coast. You have to write kind of, you have to draw kind of small. You run all the way up the coast like that. You've got those letters to contend with, but hopefully you can fit them in. But they're kind of a, a range that runs north to south along that eastern coast of Australia. Okay, and uh, maybe I could write it down here. Put a little line and write. Great. Dividing range. Now maybe you, um, if you have a chance to talk with your classmates, you can, maybe in class you can discuss which mountains are higher, you know, it's taller mountains. I know the Himalayas are pretty high mountains. Um, you can compare the height of the Himalayas to some of these other mountain ranges. 
That'd be kind of fun to talk about. Um, let's just do one more range. It's called the Transantarctic Range. And that runs kind of in this, it, we'll go down to our inside of Antarctica. And it kind of starts like right about here. Just follow along with me here. It's going to run. Right about in that area there. Okay, and uh, where can I write that? Maybe I'll, maybe I can fit it right here. Trans, it's a long word, Transantarctic. I'll put a hyphen. Transant. Arctic range. And you can check that off your list over here. Um, let's see now. I think that that's pretty much all the mountains. All right. So we did quite a bit of mountains today. And, uh, you know, the, the world is not nice and smooth like a like a globe or you know, a ball like this. It's very rough, lots of uh, indentations, valleys, and mountains. And you know, so um, we can show that on a piece of paper using color and symbols. So um, that's the nice thing about a map. And uh, I think that that's pretty much it for the uh, mountain ranges. Um, next video, we'll get into some of the lines that appear on the, on the map, like the equator and things like that. And uh, very soon we'll be done with this map. All right, so good job today.